Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff. I'm here with Insights in Tech. I'm here with Barmak Mefta. Barmak, please introduce yourself to our audience. Hi, Shira. Sure. Good to talk to you again. My name is Barmak Mefta. I'm president of at and Cybersecurity. Always a pleasure speaking with you, Barmak. Thank you for taking some time to talk to us today. Likewise. So, Barmak, obviously a lot has been changing around the cybersecurity landscape because of COVID-19. I was curious if at and cybersecurity has seen any related cyber criminal activity due to COVID-19. Yeah, you know, uh, unrelated to COVID-19, we continue up, we continually upgrade our systems internally. We look for threats, we look for anomalies, uh, both on our networks for our external customers, but more importantly for our own internal infrastructure as well. And um, so obviously COVID-19 has really amplified that effort on our part because we know there's external threats that are taking advantage of this situation. And uh, to be honest with you, we're in fairly uncharted territory, but we feel pretty good about our ability to monitor and see things in general. And what we're observing so far is um, there are specific attacks, both concerted and, and opportunistic or, uh, around things like phishing, um, uh, things like spyware and malware in general that take advantage of COVID-19 as more of a bait or a lure uh, to get people to click on embedded links and essentially do the old school uh, email phishing attack. So we do see those over the last two to three weeks on the rise. We continually also work with federal agencies, as you know, and our strategic alliance partners to share a lot of threat data and threat information to make sure we're all protected. Uh, but certainly COVID-19 related phishing attacks are on the rise. Um, uh, separately, on our open exchange uh, threat intelligence platform, which is a crowdsourced threat intelligence platform globally, we're definitely seeing a fairly exponential increase around both, again, concerted and opportunistic phishing attacks that not just target the U.S. itself, but the global footprint altogether. Well, certainly, those are very important topics that you're mentioning. And just to segue a little to the phishing piece that you're talking about, the human factors parts playing on the emotions. I know we've had many discussions around cybersecurity and phishing and many other of those um, attacks that you did mention. Any helpful hints you can give to some of our uh, listeners that they can be aware of besides, you know, going to write to the organization itself or typing in the URL or not clicking on links, anything else that you can uh, give us some advice on? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say, um, think about it, kind of the attack surface has changed, right? Where, you know, primarily we used to work from offices and now we're working from homes. And so the changing attack surface will um, shine the light on certain IT assets that are more important to protect. So if you think about it, you know, I, we would definitely encourage people to take a look at their endpoints. Uh, there's going to be a, a more BYOD type environments that connect to the corporate infrastructure. People will use their personal computers at home. And so a company's ability to be able to provision, protect, and detect threats on endpoints, not necessarily corporate-owned endpoints, but endpoints that are used by employees all over the place is going to be important. I think um, securing remote access is going to be really important. As you know, the only way we can connect to the corporate environment now is going to be through remote access. So uh, anything that helps um, uh, secure the two endpoints between your home and your office and obviously the data that, that will uh, go between the home and the office is going to be very, very important. Um, third is going to be uh, your IT footprint is going to change, where on-prem IT assets were a lot more important when you're in the office. The use of cloud-based IT assets is going to increase also exponentially. So uh, security and monitoring tools, everything from protection, prediction, detection, response on your cloud-based IT assets are going to be critically important. So I would I would definitely um, guide uh, IT environments and CISOs to look at their cloud footprint a, a lot more because those would be stressed. Um, and finally, um, communication. So anything that has to do with identity, authentication, uh, cryptography, and, and keeping data that, that's going between one endpoint to the other endpoint, in this case being home to the corporate office, is going to be very, very important. So those would be the areas that will probably shine the light on a lot more. Obviously, all those that I mentioned were important anyway, uh, even if you worked from uh, the office, but working from home, those specific attack vectors or attack surfaces are gonna be things that I would be probably uh, more obsessed about. No, oh, very important, and that's certainly for each employee as they are 
it, working with your organizations from a remote workplace, that's critical. And organizations as a whole, what can organizations do to reduce the risk of being breached more as an organizational, not just their employees of things that they have to look out for, but more as a global feel for an organization? Are there some pointers you could give us there as well? Yeah, I think the main thing I would say is, you know, tools, security controls, automation will go only so far. And if you look at, you know, uh, the current attack vectors, primarily still the human factor is very, very important, right? So I don't think anything will replace good old fashioned training of the employees and, and uh, educating the employees about the importance of being more worried and obsessed about the potential security threats. And so I, I point back to, you know, uh, things as simple as email phishing. And again, you know, going back, there's a, you know, there's, there, there's an acute response right now where people will use COVID-19 as a bait. It's something that draws on our anxiety. And so, you know, it's very, um, you know, it's very easy for somebody to see an embedded link in an email that points to something related to COVID-19, whether it's educational, whether it's related to you personally, and your tendency would be to click on that link to see what's going on basically over the web, and that's how they get you usually uh, and access your personal data, et cetera. So I would probably stress the importance of education. I'd stress the importance of uh, not being too anxious about things and stepping back, taking a look at it, and rationally observing the, the activities that we do and the way we interact, obviously, with the internet. I think you actually touched upon probably the most important factor of the stop and pause. I think that people in general, they're, they're literally pulled in many different ways. And certainly with this remote work, we're in a very different environment than our work environment, whether being family at home, other things pulling at us. And it's like, okay, I'll get one thing done, maybe have many devices open at once, or trying to do many different tasks at the same time. So there's that speed going without the stop and pause. So I love the fact that you uh, touched upon that. I also like the fact that at t stresses the people, the process, and the technology, where you have to deal with both parts, the people and the technology, but the process in between is the glue. And we've spoken about that a lot. And those factors are critical. Again, the training, the awareness, the total cyber hygiene organization needs. So, Barmak, also, I, I wanted to ask you another thing in terms of future of work. How do you think we are going to segue into the future of work? And what do you think that'll look at? Some changes that you think might stay the same, they might manifest itself a little bit differently. What type of ideas do you think will happen and will actually be into play then? Yeah, it's a great question, sure. I think uh, the way I would think about it is I would probably think about how to deal with security in, in two threads. Thread one is how do we protect ourselves in, in the immediate future, right? So in the foreseeable future, while we're in this uncharted territory altogether and trying to essentially make sure that we, we go through this fairly unscathed from a security perspective. So, so from an acute perspective, I'll just focus on some of the things that I mentioned, which is more, more amplification of the attack surface and the IT assets that are more interesting to the attackers given the COVID-19 environment. So I probably wouldn't worry about the future too much and just worry about what, what we can do right now as humanity, protect ourselves and um, and ensure that we go on scale, then we're all in it together. So the more the more information we can share with each other, the more threat intelligence, threat data that we observe that we can share with each other and educate each other, the better. I think going forward, you pointed to something very important here that I, I actually fundamentally think that what happened to us is going to change our behavior. Now it's going to change our behavior socially, hopefully not for the worse, but for the better. But it's going to certainly change our behavior in the importance of risk and security in that I think remote work is gonna increase. Uh, I think uh, um, things that we used to do that had interpersonal touch, I think those are gonna probably be less and give way to things that are more electronic, more digital. And so the area of automation, the area of digital interaction, uh, remote workforce, those are gonna be increasing. The way we shop, I think, is going to change going forward. I think where, you know, we used to go in stores and, and have that personal touch is going to also give way to us shopping online a lot more. I mean, that was on the increase anyway, but I think that's going to exponentially increase. So I think from a security perspective, you know, the way we think about security always, you have to take a look at your, the exposure of your attack surface. You have to take a look at your adversary. And you have to assess the risk of that attack surface and how the adversary thinks about that attack surface. 
And I think given those changing dynamics, we got to start thinking about new security controls and new educational tools that are going to have us think uh, about security a little bit differently than we used to in the past. And the one kind of common thread or least common denominator is I just believe the movement of hybrid infrastructure is going to increase where a lot more on-prem assets are going to go to the cloud and, and a lot more interaction is going to happen over the web. A lot more interaction is going to happen from home to the corporate network. So security ultimately has to adapt uh, to, to sort of um, to assimilate or, or to take the same shape as the way we interact with each other going forward as well. Yeah, I like the fact that you highlighted the sharing of information that's needed across organizations. And I have to give kudos to at and ATT Cybersecurity for being at the forefront of that. And that has been a big change in the industry in the last while of sharing of intel and sharing of information to be stronger, better. And certainly the fact that you're highlighting, even in this remote type of work, it is critical that we continue this way because adversaries are not slowing down. If anything, they're speeding up. So that's an important point. So thank you for that. Um, we also, as we were talking earlier, you mentioned a little bit about Telemedica. I'd love to hear your thoughts about that in terms of future of work. Yeah, I mean, that's just one example of it where um, it's interesting you mentioned that, you know, one of my family members had a need to see a doctor. Obviously, you can't see one today. Um, and uh, so we actually used telemedicine for the first time. And there is an application that we installed on the iPad. And you'd be surprised. It's very impressive. And so through that application, you can virtually connect with your MD. Um, and for all intents and purposes, you can essentially go through an office visit online, um, everything from imaging to uh, written communication to verbal communication can all be done through the application. I think uh, we still have a ways to go to make it completely seamless as if you were in the same office with your MD, obviously, uh, but it was pretty darn good. As we were going through that exercise, all that was going through my head was kind of this obsessive compulsive disorder of what happened if this application gets hacked. Can you imagine, because we're, we're talking about medical information, medical imaging, medical data, and these things are um, great for hackers to, uh, to get access to and phenomenally bad for you know, us as patients. And so I think, I think uh, telemedicine is an area of, of interaction that's gonna be more virtual and remote, much like anything else going forward. And we should really, really uh, pay attention to things like encryption, uh, secure communication between the application and your medical doctor, and ultimately the security of data in motion, data at rest, uh, whether it's your images, and, you know, whether it's your verbal communication with the doctor. And so I think the security elements of those applications are going to increase dramatically. But it's a really awesome way to sit in the comfort of your own home and be able to treat it by your doctor much the same way you were sitting in their office and, and being treated by them. So, so I do think there's a lot of good, and I hate to say it because we're in really bad times right now, but I do think there's a lot of good that could potentially come out of it once we're all, all, all out of this mess hopefully soon. So very true. I just want to add on one more point that I think – um, we should think about as well. It, it, we all go to the doctors. Everything is pretty much digitalized now, even before COVID hit, and everything is being sent digitally. And I don't believe that security was where it should have been. And I do believe, based on what you're saying and going forward, I think the security around even doctors' offices, the type of, of uh, pro uh, programs they're using and how they're transporting and sharing of digital information and of people's health records are going to be that much better. So yes, you know what, we have to find the good in everything. And I think that's a very big, good point that you're saying. So thank you for that. Exactly. Well, Barmak, thank you very much. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Likewise, Shira. Thanks so much again for taking the time. Thank you. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Okay. Take care, Shira. You Bye too. Now. Thank you.